Hi, my name is Tesney. Today, let's G-Pose. This is my guide to screen captures in Final Fantasy XIV on controller and PS4. No mods, no presets, no free Kubo nuts. I want to talk about settings and controls. There are a lot of guides out there for the artistry aspect of fantasy photography. This is not one of them. I'm assuming you're here because those guides are a bit light on the in-game tools. Before you hit that G-Pose button, open up character settings and make sure you've got the right options for your session. The three big ones here are in the controls on the first page. For an easy way to shift between third and first person, check this button. If I know for sure I'll be doing close-ups, I'll uncheck this as an option, but for housing, I like having it. The real game changer is camera speed because this gives you so much control. A faster camera speed lets you set up the lighting quickly and try out multiple angles. For housing and video, try slowing down your camera. Here's one way controller is hands down better than keyboard. This is the keyboard panning at slowest setting at one functional speed. It's either moving or it's not. The controller analog stick, however, picks up some speeds in between. The other camera angle option you can work with is here, where the character is vertically on the screen. Unfortunately, controller players have to adjust this option outside of G-Pose, so make sure your settings are saved inside if you decide to change it mid-session. The camera settings you save inside of G-Pose are independent of this position. Press square to open the controls. By hitting the cycle elements button, you can bring up the chat log and hide it again by opening the chat line and hitting square. To pause your characters at the perfect moment, use R2 or L2. To line up emotes, I like to pick up an obvious and easy part of the emote cycle. Practice is good. Most non-player characters do not freeze, but other players do. G-Pose will pick up whatever emote plus expression a character did last, so wait until everyone is fully emoted before you hit the G-Pose button. From there, you can change what direction characters face and freeze them independently by using the D-pad left and right to shift through available perspectives. Patience and practice are key. There are motion controls for running and walking, for when emotes aren't cutting it. Lining up characters to touch at just the right moment can be time consuming. You don't have to match. Sometimes it's as simple as coordinating colors and smiles. You can combine emotes with expressions to change the mood. Choosing a new expression does not overwrite the previous emote, and you can change both inside of G-Pose for yourself, but not for other characters. G-Pose will also capture fireworks and other similar item type emotes. It works the same way. Use it like you would an emote, hop into G-Pose, and there you have it. Inside of G-Pose, you can also change your character's emote to, and still get those effects. If you're using a persistent emote, you can use the face camera command triangle button to refresh the confetti. This does not work with the single emotes. The game has a host of built-in filters, and what works in a given session changes. Some filters are better at night, or need picky lighting considerations, or need manual light adjustment. Some turn battle effects into mud. Some are unflattering for certain skin tones. So it's really a matter of trial and error for what works best for your character. That said, try pastel one through three, or bright one through four. Each number brings out a different palette, and odds are good you'll find one you can work with. Lighting can also change a filter completely. The game offers three light sources you can place, each with three basic settings, and then sliders to further adjust the brightness and colors. The game defaults to adding a bit more red to each light. The brightest light setting casts light over the entire space. The second light setting is something in between, and then the lowest light setting one is just very much a little lamp right next to a character. 
Most of the time, I find myself using a setup like this one. The centermost light is the brightest, with the two side lights offering light support. To place light one without navigating all the way to the lighting page, you can use R1. Character lighting changes the lighting for all the characters in your G pose. These effects aren't as noticeable after you've applied lights and filters, but if you need your characters to pop a bit more, here's how. There are several ways to reset lighting and brightness. Limb darkening and camera effects, toggle battle effects, you get the idea. The camera position inside of G-Pose is independent of controller zoom. This camera position does not affect lighting placement. Extreme camera positions are often uncomfortable, but this option can give you some breathing room inside of housing areas and capture that patented, I'm done with your free coupon nuts look. You can rotate the screen for a portrait or just slightly to give it a candid feel. Camera and lighting settings can be saved and loaded. These settings are preserved between logins, but not between characters. Today I learned, inside the motion setting page, there's an option called track camera. This orders your character's eyeballs to follow the camera while the body continues to emote in whatever direction is previously set. G-Pose automatically loops the emote, but if you want to return to idling, you can. Like the track camera feature, this is disabled in G-Pose each session until you activate it. The time displays here. Keep it set to Eorzean time to give you an idea how long you've been basking in G-Pose glory. You can stop time and weather progression here. These character display settings are fairly straightforward. If you don't want to be photobombed by an Amazu, there's a button for that. There's also a drop down menu with some quick options. Wet attire is a feature that makes my popato somehow too bony and not bony enough. Your mileage may vary. Unsync old dungeons for a host of great backdrops. Dungeons don't change times or weather. To change how you save and capture in the game, you need to access the settings on your PS4. When you hit the share button, this PS4 menu comes up. The sharing and broadcast settings page will give you the option to take a screenshot with a quick press of the share button. Press twice for video confused me for a long time, so this might not be how it works, but this is how I do it. My video length is set to 60 minutes, and so at any given point in the game, I can hit the share button and capture the last 60 minutes. This is useful for when something interesting happens and you can grab it after the fact. When you press the share button, it also resets the capture. If you do not save it right here, the game passively dumps the video before. So you can make your video capture as short as you like by proactively hitting the share button right as things get interesting. Getting captures from the PS4 to anywhere else can be a bit time consuming. The PS4 gets bogged down by trimming and processing 60 minute videos, so I try to focus recording into several shorter files. I prefer using a USB drive, but you can also link a social media account and upload directly. Captures can also be set to private and downloaded to a device for editing and storage. I made this video because one of the comments I see in online G-Pose and fashion groups is that I'm on PS4 so I can't. I need you to know that you can. Thanks so much for watching.